At times, wrestling is used as a bit of a poorly developed afterthought on the big and small screen. It may look like it and it may sound like it, but it ain't wrestling. But when taken seriously, films and shows about professional wrestling illustrate the grit and toughness of that lifestyle. We see the toll the business takes on the human body and human relationships. So we've taken the time to separate the gold from the gunk, so to speak. Half of this list warrants a this is awesome chant, while the others most definitely deserve a what? Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling, and here are the five best and five worst portrayals of pro wrestling in movies and television. Number five on the worst, Body Slam. One critic stated that Body Slam was a mediocre comedy that will appeal to wrestling fans far more than anyone else. Bad news, it doesn't appeal to wrestling fans either. As an actor, Rowdy Roddy Piper elevated films like Hell Comes to Frogtown and cult classic They Live. Sadly, it was beyond his abilities to elevate or salvage this ultra 80s cheese. Fest. Body Slam is the tale of a downtrodden music executive who decides to try his hand at wrestling promotion. What could go wrong? That promoter is played by minor 80s star and member of the A-team, Dirk Benedict. Visually, Body Slam looks like it was meant to be an old episode of Hardcastle and McCormick, though. Captain Lou Albano appearing as himself adds a touch of charm. Not his, nor any of the other wrestling cameos can overcome a hacky script, however. The beats and story arc are all very predictable for a 1986 comedy, it must be said. The one upside of Body Slam is that the in-ring wrestling is pretty damn good, due to actual pro wrestlers, you know, being cast. WWE alums, Barbarian, Tonga Kid, and the Samoans all appear in the film. The juice, though, is not worth this 92-minute squeeze. Number 5 of the Best Glow Netflix took one of the silliest wrestling programs of all time and made it a legitimately interesting dramedy about the 1980s ladies' promotion, Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Glow earns its accolades because ultimately it still presented the wrestling business in a serious light. Yes, the women had corny gimmicks and iffy ring skills, but Glow takes the Jewers on a journey. As the ladies and manager Sam Sylvia, played flawlessly by comic Mark Merrin, begrudgingly fall in love with the industry, the audience takes that emotional voyage with them. Stars Alison Brie and Betty Gilpin present a great example of how personalities and relationships on camera can be a stark contrast from reality. Watching the wrestlers develop their gimmicks, brainstorm ideas, and navigate the mood swings of the often grumpy Sam, keep the audience engaged in between moments of ring action. Sadly, however, Glow wasn't renewed by Netflix after three seasons, despite winning three Primetime Emmy Awards. Number four of the worst, Young Rock. Where to begin with this Young Rock, eh? In concept, a semi-autobiographical show about the journey of young Dwayne Johnson seems bulletproof. In execution, viewers are given a ham-fisted retelling of Rock's life as a child, high school student, and college football player before becoming the great one. This is set against a backdrop of a near future where the Rock is running for president, and Randall Park is a bootlicking awkward interviewer. The problem with this idea is that a lot of history has to be glowed up to fit the narrative of the show. Many of the wrestlers portrayed in the show did not work for the Maivia family during that time, or at all for that matter, and several other historical accounts were erased or changed in order to better present Rocky and the family's image in the show. Number four of the best, No Holds Barred. To fully appreciate No Holds Barred, it helps to be a fan of 1980s WWE. Full of all the larger-than-life action and cheesy dialogue one would expect, Hulk Hogan leads this flick past being bad and loops around to the point of being so bad that it's actually pretty good. Flexing his acting chops, larger-than-life wrestling champion Hulk Hogan plays the lead role of Rip. The seemingly unbeatable Rip faces his biggest challenge and opponent, Zeus. As the film was produced by WWE, Hogan and WWE chairman Vince McMahon had creative control of the script. Released in 1989, No Holds Barred fully embraces kayfabe and gives us only what we are supposed to see. Legendary character actor Kurt Fuller is the one who steals the show as the wonderfully smarmy TV executive Brel, though. Brel plans on starting his own wrestling show, but when Rip refuses to work for Brel, he enacts an evil plan to have Rip dethroned by the monstrous Zeus. Zeus is played by the late Tiny Tom Lister, who then went on to appear as the character in WWE for about a year before being released. Number three of the worst, Fighting With My Family. Fighting With My Family is a quasi-biographical movie about former WWE superstar Paige and her rise to stardom. The movie was produced by WWE Studios, so we knew we wouldn't get too honest of a peek behind the curtain. Fighting With My Family feels like a light, humorous, feel-good origin story of a lifelong wrestling fan. It hits the notes it intends to hit. Florence Pugh is undeniably charming as Paige, and The Rock is always going to be an asset, isn't he? Like a Cadbury's cream egg, the movie is shiny and goes down easy, but you somewhat regret the choice immediately afterwards. In the assets column, Fighting With My Family took the actual wrestling pretty seriously. Being a WWE product, the movie shone in the areas that WWE 
does well. The ring work was good, even for the non-wrestler actors, the production quality was top-notch, and it clearly had a decent budget. The movie suffered in the areas where WWE typically suffers. To quote Jim Cornette, Vince McMahon sells the sizzle, not the steak. It all wraps up in a neat package that would make any studio executive grin like a Cheshire cat. For many true wrestling fans, though, it lacks any of the real grit of a good wrestling story. Number 3 of the best, Paradise Alley. Sylvester Stallone directed this 1978 drama about the crossover world of professional wrestling and organized crime. While wrestling as a mafia front may be a bit of a stretch, the seedy underbelly of the industry is exposed without completely exposing the business. In 1978, if Martin Scorsese had been inspired to make a wrestling movie, he would have shared a few similarities with Paradise Alley, no doubt. Stallone plays one of three orphan brothers living in 1940s New York City. The brothers, always looking for the next way to get rich quick, devise a plan to turn one of them into a wrestler. The film's tone evokes the grit and struggle of New York in the 1940s, and its climax is a 12-minute wrestling match in a leaky, shoddy arena during a thunderstorm cinematic. Paradise Alley's wrestling scenes aren't exactly barn burners, but the script, performances, and cinematography elevate the mediocre ring work. The movie stands on its dramatic legs more than its action, and it works in this case. The same way quality storylines connect fans with the wrestlers, this tale of blue-collar desperation and loss gives the audience something on which to hang their hats. Number 2 of the worst, Ready to Rumble Have you ever wondered how one can elevate the wrestling career of David Arquette and try to kill the wrestling business in under two hours? I humbly present Ready to Rumble. To its credit, Ready to Rumble brought in a ton of legitimate wrestling talent. The problem lies in the fact that the movie is akin to a 90-minute Saturday Night Live sketch about pro wrestling, but with D-team writers. David Arquette is predictably campy, his character Gordy would also fit right in on the set of Reno 911. He and his friends are outraged that an unscrupulous wrestling promoter ousted their favorite wrestler. The two set upon a Bill and Ted meets Beavis and Butthead adventure to see their hero restored to his former glory. Sure, we get to see Goldberg, Spear, and Jack hammer some guys, and the baby faces go over in the end. But telling us that Oliver Platt could compete in a ring with Sting or Diamond Dallas Page is asking a bit much from our collective disbelief. Number two of the best, Heels. Heels finished its first season and has been renewed for a second on premium network stars. This is as close as one can come to the independent wrestling scene without having to personally lace up a pair of boots and get super kicked in the face. The dramatic elements of the show provides crossover appeal to viewers who may not be walking in the door as wrestling fans. Stephen Amell, a self-professed wrestling fan, leads a stellar ensemble cast. Amell plays Jack Spade, a pro wrestler who is the eldest son of local legendary wrestler slash promoter Tom King Spade. Jack takes over the promotion after Tom commits suicide. From there, we see Tom spin proverbial plates to keep the Duffy Wrestling League afloat, manage a day job, handle his egotistical brother Ace, and take care of his family. He was spared no expense in ensuring the in-ring action and backstage politics felt real. The looks, emotions, and motivations of each character gives depth and investment into their stories. Most importantly, it's apparent to any smart wrestling fan that the writers know wrestling. The communication between wrestlers feels organic, and the actual wrestling makes sense. All in all, Heels qualifies as a must-see for not just fans, but for wrestlers, some of whom could stand to learn a few things about the business. Number one of the worst, The Wrestler 1974. This 1974 Ed Asner movie bears almost no resemblance to the 2008 film of the same name. One watch and you'll know why nobody would remake this particular entry. The biggest redeeming quality the film has is its many cameos by classic wrestling legends like Danny Hodge, Dusty Rhodes, and Vern Gagne. Gagne, who produced the film, was able to easily cast talent from his promotion. But while Vern was able to make sure the filmmakers got the wrestling right, he didn't do much for the rest of it. The plot revolves around wrestling promoter Frank, an idealist who makes a stand against the mobsters, gamblers, scoundrels, and ne'er-do-wells that threaten to corrupt the industry he loves. Once you get past that unlikely scenario, things creep downhill at a glacial pace. Being that the movie was made back in 1974 by a wrestling promoter, kayfabe was still very much intact. Kudos to Ed Asner for delivering his lines with some gravitas, despite the content. In particular, he delivers a great speech to two snobby stuff suits about the fringe benefits of wrestling and the toll it takes on those in the ring. Number one of the best, The Wrestler 2008. Highly acclaimed and nominated for two Academy Awards, Darren Aronofsky directed a masterful portrayal of aging wrestler Randy the Ram Robinson. Mickey Rourke stars as Robinson and his story is so close to the bone that many thought the film was based on the real-life tales of wrestlers like Jake the Snake Roberts. Like so many actual legends of the business, Robinson struggles to leave the spotlight behind. Decades past his prime, the veteran lives in a camper, has a strained relationship with his estranged daughter, and fights to keep his legend alive on the indie circuit. It's heartbreaking to watch as a once great wrestler is 
delegated to outlaw Mud Show hardcore matches while fighting a losing battle with Father Time. Unlike Young Rock and Fighting With My Family, for example, the wrestler captures the non-glossy side of the wrestling world. It may be fun to watch the meteoric rise of young talent, but we rarely get to bear witness to the final act of a wrestler's career. The Kleenex grabber is when Robinson tells his daughter, you're my little girl, and now I'm an old, broken down piece of meat, and I'm alone, and I deserve to be all alone. I just need a moment, okay? Just, just one moment, right? <laughs> God. And that's our list. Know any other great and not so great portrayals of pro wrestling in movies and TV? Then let us know all about them in the comments section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if you like this kind of thing, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been Gareth, portraying a presenter on What Culture Wrestling. Thank you very much for watching this video today, and hopefully, I'll see your faces very, very soon. Bye bye.